Hello everybody, welcome to Worship Today here at Trinity Lutheran Church in Litchfield Park, Arizona. This is a wonderful time of year to worship the Lord, isn't it? We're at the end of the year, there's a lot of special services going on. We're just on the heels of um, the Reformation service where we remembered that um, we are saved by grace alone, by faith alone, in Christ alone. We're getting really close to thanksgiving and thanking the good Lord for all his many blessings that he's poured so freely into our lives, including eternal salvation in our Savior, Jesus. And then right after that, it's going to be the Advent season, our preparation for the approaching Christmas season. And we remember all those great promises and who was born in Bethlehem and why he came into the world. And then, of course, Christmas will be here and we will celebrate the birth of Christ. It's an exciting time of year in the, um, in the life of the church and in our worship life together. Today is also an exciting day. It's a bittersweet day. Today we are celebrating All Saints Day. And of course the bitterness is that we miss our loved ones who have died in the faith. Death brings an, an emptiness into our hearts that um, as we miss our loved ones, whether that was just really recently or even if it's been years or even decades ago, that, that emptiness remains. But the sweetness, of course, are the words of eternal life. That our loved ones who die in Christ live, live with Christ, and they are awaiting the resurrection of the dead on the last day. So today, it's All Saints Day here at Trinity Lutheran Church, and we're going to thank God for the faith and life of those who have gone before us. We're glad you're with us. It's going to be a great day in worship, remembering these great promises of the resurrection of the dead and the life everlasting. We'll see you in worship in just a minute. So shall our song 
Hello, everybody. Welcome to worship today. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son, Jesus Christ, to die for you. And for his sake, he forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first scripture lesson for today on this All Saints Sunday is Isaiah chapter 25, beginning at the sixth verse. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all the peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Our second scripture lesson comes from 1 Thessalonians in the New Testament, the fourth chapter, beginning at the 13th verse. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. Accordingly to the Lord's word, we tell you that we will, who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Our next scripture lesson is from 1 Peter chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, unfading, and kept in heaven for you who by God's power are being guarded through the faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. And our gospel lesson is from Luke chapter 6, beginning at the 12th verse. 
In these days, he went out to the mountain to pray, and all night he continued in prayer. And when day came, he called his disciples and chose from them twelve, whom he named apostles, Simon, whom he named Peter, and Andrew, his brother, and James and John, and Philip and Bartholomew, and Matthew and Thomas, and James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, who was called the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became the traitor. And he came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon, who came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all the crowd sought to touch him, for power came out from him, and he healed them all. This is the word of our God. We continue now by confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. church is one foundation is Jesus Christ her Lord she is his new creation by water and the word from heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride and with his blood he
Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon, the zealot, Jude, and Matthias. You know these names. They are the 12 apostles. These are the ones who were personally chosen by the Lord Jesus. These are the ones who were chosen to be eye, ear, and hand witnesses to Jesus and his life, his death, and his resurrection. These are the 12 witnesses who have heard and seen and touched and investigated in order to confirm that Jesus really is the Son of God who has risen from the dead. They are the official witnesses of the Son of God. There is no greater group of men than these 12 in the history of the world. This is an elite group of men chosen by the Son of God himself to be his official witnesses. Can you imagine being one of the 12 disciples? But yet, of these 12, we know very little about most of them. You may, have been, you may even have a hard time remembering their names. Well, we certainly know Peter and John and Matthew because they wrote books in the New Testament for us. But the other nine, we know very little about. Perhaps a story or two about them at the most. But that's really good news for us. It reminds us that in the kingdom of God, the focus is on Christ, and it's not on us. The glory goes to the Lord and not to us. Anything that we do is because of his power at work in and through us. In the Christian faith and life, the glory is God's. And the focus is on the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember how John the Baptist described this? He must increase. I must decrease. Can you imagine if the focus and the emphasis was on us? If the Lord turned the spotlight on you, all of your sin and disobedience and rebellion and immorality would be highlighted. It'd be a terrible thing, wouldn't it? It would be a shameful thing. We would all be scurrying under rocks, scrambling for cover in, not, in order not to be seen. Our sin is a terrible thing. It is not anything that we are proud of, and we certainly don't want it publicly exposed. In fact, rather than boasting about our sin, we renounce our sinful life. We repent, and we thank God that he forgives us because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thankfully, the Lord has promised that he will never, ever remember your sins again. They are forgiven and they remain forgiven forever. Your sins have been taken by the Son of God, never to be seen again. That's why the glory is God's and the focus is on the Lord Jesus Christ. The focus and the glory is not on us, 
It's not even on the 12 apostles, that elite group of men who were the official witnesses of Christ. The focus is on Jesus. He is the sinless one who lived a perfectly obedient life at all times and in all things. He has nothing shameful in his life. There is no disobedience, no rebellion in his spirit. He was never tangled up in immorality. He never had a moment of weakness. He never intentionally sinned. Jesus is holy and righteous in all things at all times. And his holy and righteous life is given to you as a gift of salvation. Like a robe that covers you, Jesus' righteous life covers over your shameful life. God the Father never sees your disobedience and rebellion. It is forgiven by the death of Jesus on the cross and you are covered over by his perfectly obedient and holy life. God the Father chooses to see the righteousness of Christ that covers you, and he promises never to look at nor even to remember your sin again. That's why the glory is God's. And the focus is on Jesus. Neither the glory nor the focus is on us. Not even the 12 apostles. Today we're celebrating All Saints Day. Today we remember those who have gone before us. They have died in the faith. They remained faithful to the end. They are now with Christ in heaven. Today we thank God for their faith and life and that we got to know them and love them. But we are not here to herald the accomplishments of great people. We are certainly not here to pray for the dead nor even to pray to the dead. Rather, All Saints Day is a time to thank God that he was gracious and compassionate and merciful to poor sinful people that we loved and cared about and who have now died in Christ. And ironically, as we remember our loved ones who have gone before us, once again, the focus is really on Jesus and not on them. We celebrate the eternal life they have, and that eternal life comes from the crucified and risen Lord Jesus Christ, who gave them that free gift of eternal life. So even as we remember our loved ones, we are focused on Christ because he has given them life in the kingdom of heaven. What a complete turnaround from the ways of the world. The people of the world, they strive for a legacy. They dream of doing something grand that's going to make a difference and change the world. It's a prideful delusion that puffs them up as they try to cover over their sin, appease their guilt, hide their shame, or even find meaning to life without Christ. As God's people, as Christians, we have no interest in leaving a legacy. We are not chasing after some self 
important dream or some delusions of grandeur about ourselves as if we could change the world. Rather, we live humble lives, humble lives of faith. We live in Christ and give God the glory. We live simple lives, trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. Our lives are marked by faithfulness, faithfulness to God, faithfulness to his word. That is where you will find true meaning in life. And that is where you will make a difference in people's life. Remain faithful. In Christ, we live humble and simple lives of faithfulness. So be faithful to your wife. Be faithful to your husband. Be faithful to your kids. Be faithful to your parents. Be faithful in your work. Be faithful at school. Be faithful to your friends. Be faithful as, as a citizen of the United States. Be faithful to your church. Remain faithful to the Lord your God. This is how we live as God's people. This is what we remember and celebrate in the lives of the saints who have gone before us. Faithfulness is the mark of God's people. Faithfulness is how we remember the 12 apostles, and there are no one greater than them. Whether we can remember their names or not and remember the details of their life stories, we know that they were faithful to the Lord their God. Faithfulness is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit at work within you so that you can be faithful in all of your vocations. Faithfulness is a gift given to you by Christ in holy baptism. Faithfulness is how you glorify your Father who is in heaven. Faithfulness is how you love your neighbor. Be faithful. Trust God. And then do your duty. Love your neighbor. Let your light shine for Christ. In that way, the glory goes to God and the emphasis is on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God and the Savior of the world. Be faithful. Amen. We pray. Lord God, we thank you that you are the Lord of life and we celebrate the life you have given us in Jesus Christ. Give us a deep conviction and a bold confession of the resurrection of the dead and the life everlasting. Lord, we ask that you will comfort those who mourn today. Assure them of your love and strength as they trust in you and your promises. Father, we look forward in faith to the last day when all of your saints living and departed, will be reunited in the kingdom of glory. Until that time, help us to stand firm in our faith and find comfort as we worship with the communion of saints. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, 
and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God's blessings. We'll see you next week. Jerusalem the golden With milk and honey blessed The sight of it refreshes The weary and oppressed I know not, oh I know not what joys await us there? What radiancy of glory? What bliss beyond compare? They stand those halls of Zion, all jubilant with song. Yeah.